It is paramount that we move in seasons that God has called us to recognize. And God doesn't just go by calendar holidays, but he does use them. He gave Israel a prescription of holidays, holy days, from Passover to Pentecost, Feast the Booths, and all of those things that the Jews, even some to this day, still keep up with. However, we're not obligated to keep those particular said days as it relates to New Testament believers. In other words, if you have not memorized all the Jewish holidays, it's okay. You're all right. The one thing you do remember is Jesus Christ saved me because I asked him to be Lord of my life and I repented of my sins. And now I am a candidate for anything extra and new to come into my life because I've asked him to be Lord of my life. I've got notes all over the place, but I'm not sure where I'm going. I'm just going to let the notes come out, come out in me in, in such a way that the Holy Spirit is just going to organize it for today and possibly next week and the week after, who knows. But in the Bible, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, the Bible says, Then Peter said to them, Repent. Now I want you to notice something. Jesus has been crucified. Jesus has been lifted up into heaven. He ascended. And one day he's going to return. In the same way that we've seen him go, there's going to be an activity where Jesus will come back again. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit fell. And we know that 49 days after Passover, and then we begin to see the day of Pentecost come to fruition. And an event took place. Historically, they were observing a holiday. But God was getting ready to fulfill through the prophet Joel when he prophesied in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, all society, not just called out kings and priests, all ages, not particular requirements to enter the priesthood, and all sexes as it relates to male and female, servants, slaves, everyone is now a candidate for God's richest blessings to blanket this earth. How many know he said that his glory shall fill the earth? Did he say that? How do you think he's going to do that? It's not just going to be some cosmic event, even though there is going to be some cosmic events. But his glory comes through submitted, sold out people as you and I throughout the earth receiving Christ as their savior and then being open and sensitive and unashamed to be a witness for Jesus Christ and to receive all the experience the Bible says that we are to have. How does that begin? You repent. You repent. Repent means my first thought was wrong. And so now I understand God wants to give me a new mind, a new way of thinking. The mind of Christ. And Peter, until he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, was basically a jerk. To put it in modern day vernacular. He he became fearful and basically became ashamed. But when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he, he was a supporter of Jesus. 
He received Jesus as his Savior. But when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, we can see right here in Scripture, there was a, there was a marked difference between his experience with Jesus in salvation and also his experience in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Something happened. Something changed. Whether you like it or not, you do a psychological study, you'll see that Peter changed. He was, a, he was willing now to speak to the crowd that killed Jesus without any fear. Now, I'm not telling you that it's going to manifest exactly the same way with you, but wherever there was fear, I'm going to tell you, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, something well, being saved is enough. It's enough to get you to heaven. But there's a lot more to this experience. They were in the upper room. Following the command of Jesus to tarry, to wait there until they be endued or clothed or filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, wait there. Tarry there. They're in the upper room, 120. And we did, if we do the studies and some of the person, personalities in that 120, you'll be amazed. There were zealots. There's all kinds of people in that situation had different mindsets, but they all, when the Holy Ghost came, they all had the same experience. On different people. Every one of us come from different backgrounds and, and, and families and experiences. But when the Holy Spirit falls on us, it's amazing how, and I've been in other parts of the world, not everywhere, but a few parts of the world, and I've run into Christians who can't speak English. And it's amazing to me how they have the same actions and the same reactions to the Holy Spirit as I do in America, and they could be 7,000 miles across the earth, and the Holy Spirit touched them, and that makes them all act and respond in the way that God, the Bible says that humans would. And it's amazing how that just blows my mind, how consistent, how real that the Bible is, and Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit is, no matter what culture on earth is experiencing the power of God, I have seen them from Greek, to Latin, to Russian, to wherever. I've met these people before, and seen them all respond and talk about God the same way you and I would, as if we know each other for many years. The Holy Spirit is an equal opportunity situation everyone to everyone who will call on the name of the Lord the Bible says will receive this gift if anyone and everyone would call upon the name of the Lord how many know that there's people still calling on the Lord do you believe that there are people that you know are still calling upon the Lord. We're still calling on the Lord as saints of God. There are people calling on the Lord to be saved. There are still people calling on the Lord, genuinely calling on the Lord. And as long as there are people calling on the Lord, there was no cessation of these gifts when the apostles died. As long as there are people that are calling on the Lord, there are people being baptized in the Holy Ghost after they're saved. Absolutely. Absolutely. The fastest growing Christian experience in, outside the U.S. is Pentecostalism. Thank you. I'll change it to only. The only growing. And there's, there's many reasons for that. But there's really one main reason. And that is hunger for a true experience with God. That is the bottom line. And a lot of these cultures have these spooky, you know, voodoo type situations and they don't want something that's drier than what they've already been in so they'll want a spiritual experience and you should want to come to a church that has a spiritual experience don't get nervous because somebody's speaking in tongues next to you and you haven't received it yet i dare you to keep coming back to church until it jumps up inside of you this gift is for me too it is Everyone I have ever met, well, let me rephrase that. There are people that I have met, and I try to tell them about Pentecostal, 
speaking in tongues. And, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And so here's what I'm going to implore this church to do and be. You need to be in church and not any church. You need to be in the Pentecostal church. That's just the fact. You need to be in a Pentecostal church. And if less than 50% of the church is filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, then we can't really call ourselves a Pentecostal church if less than 50% of us are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Get updated. I like Pentecost Sunday for being updated. I'm going to just be pastor and speak out of my heart this morning. Is that all right? This is a... This is a passion for us. It is my passion. The Holy Ghost, I'm going to tell you, changes people. I've seen over and again some experiences that will curl your hair. Don't need a permanent. Just get a, an experience. <clears throat> but this begins because when you're baptized, and listen, I'm going to say this again, it's, an, it's a separate experience than being saved. It can happen quite close together and almost seem, I have, and I'll tell you some things that's happened. <clears throat> I'm taking liberty and not teaching as in depth today. I'm taking liberty with Pentecost Sunday. I remember praying with people and that it was my job under the pastors that I worked for. And it was only, I've only been in five churches in my lifetime. This is the fifth. And under the pastors, that um, I worked under, I always somehow became the pastor's assistant in the altars. They saw my passion. I didn't, I didn't listen, I didn't train, I didn't go to, an, a, an, a, before I started, of course, when I got into, you know, the training for ministry, that was a different situation, but I was already trained in working in the altars, because it was something I didn't get from a book I got it from experiencing the presence of God that I knew that it was so real somebody else had to experience this. And if I helped them and prayed for them, they, they would go to a class and find out what happened to them instead of going to a class to find out what needs to happen. You, you follow me so far. And so I would, I would pray. And my job under the pastors ha was always, hey, I want you in the altars working with me. Because I would pray with people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they would begin to speak in tongues. I remember praying one time with this, this, this young lady that I invited to church and y'all know my story I had this group of people and it was mostly ladies a few couple of guys but mostly ladies and um and they've never been in a Pentecostal church 99% of them I should say were never in a Pentecostal church and I remember bringing this one lady young lady she was 20 19 somewhere in there and um and she I invited her to the church she came in and saw everybody, woo, praising God, doing all these things. And, and I'm, I'm looking at her and watching her. And this is one of the several stories I have with this situation. And this particular lady, when it came to the altar call, I, I couldn't tell if she was getting it or not. She seemed, you know, like, where am I? I've never been, I, I asked her, have you ever been in a Pentecostal church before? She said, never, never heard of it. And I, was, I, I, and I was thinking, this is going to be interesting. Because I always sit up front. And uh, so, when it came to the altar service, she got convicted of her sin. And I asked her if she wanted to receive Christ. And she said, yes. I said, let's go to the altar. And I walked her to the altar and I began to pray with her to receive Christ. And she repented of her sins and, and, and prayed through right then and there. And there was other people. And all of a sudden, she starts belting out in tongues. Just belting out. I mean, not just little da, 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 da. She was like, whoa. I mean, a lot, like a fluent language was flowing off of her lips. And I was so amazed I had not seen this happen quite like that before. It did happen afterwards. Very few times have I seen people come in the Pentecostal church and never really heard. They weren't even saved. They, as a matter of fact, this girl hadn't even been in a Christian church. And she 
shouts out in tongues and she's going on and on and on. And I'm like, I was crying and everybody was emotional. But I knew more about this girl than anybody else. And then afterwards, I asked. And no, afterwards, she calmed down. She goes, and she was crying. She goes, what was that? (laughs) And I'll never forget it. I got to sit down with her in the chairs after services at the end and and begin to explain to her Acts chapter 2 and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all of this. Can I tell you something? That 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 didn't solidify it for me because I was already a believer. But I don't care if you get more evidence and more evidence and more evidence. It just it just one it just adds to the experience that God is real and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is real and speaking in tongues in a heavenly language is real and it builds up your and edifies your most holy faith. I'm going to tell you we need to remain a church that is still sensitive to the power of the Holy Spirit and know that God is doing a work just like he did on the day of Pentecost in the hour we live in now. How about it? Amen. But then when Peter got filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, he had these issues. Now, Peter's issues were still there when he got baptized in the Holy Ghost. There were some issues that every one of us have. And I'm going to be talking more about this in the next week or two. How about that? We don't have to wait just a Pentecost Sunday. I'm going to move into this. But Peter had some issues. The, 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 how would you like your issues to be written down forever where everybody else can read about them? I wouldn't like it. I'm glad I wasn't called to, for that. But Peter had issues. And I can tell you that some of the disciples had some issues as well. But Peter was just very vocal. He would open mouth and insert foot, if you know what I'm talking about. But watch this. When you read in the... And I'm just just laying foundation today. When you read the, the book of Acts, you'll find out that it wasn't just Peter who stood up to preach at, on that day of Pentecost. It wasn't just Peter. you got to remember, the rest of them stood up with him, knowing this is the crowd that crucified Christ. This is the crowd that, that is not going to hear correction as it relates to you were the reason that Jesus was crucified because part of Peter's message was to prove that they crucified the Christ, the Messiah. Now, how would you like to be told, you're a murderer? Right? There's a Greek word called boule. It's referring to the, the will of God. It means the inalterable will of God. It, it can't be changed. And so it wasn't that they were just murderers and false accusers and they crucified Christ. It was the will of God that Jesus would die and rise again. It was the irrefutable will of God. It could not be changed, but it was just going to be brought to fruition and, and, and completed by the people that God said, this is how it's going to happen. But I'm going to give up the ghost. But it's going to come through the avenue of people crucifying him. And so what you need to understand, those people were getting ready to be preached at by Peter. And he would, first of all, one of the things he had to dispute is that you Pentecostals. They didn't say that right then. But you know what I'm talking about when I say that. You Pentecostals, y'all act weird. Y'all act crazy. Y'all act like you're on crack. Y'all act like y'all are on drunk or something. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what they were accused of when they all started being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to help you a little bit because this is, there's sometimes people get confused and Pentecostals should explain it a little bit better. But when they were in the upper room and the Bible says tongues of fire came down upon 
each in one of their heads and it was an experience that would remind them of the fire in the Old Testament and it was Jewish related items and they weren't afraid they embraced and they didn't know what to expect they just believed and they didn't know what was going to happen they just stayed the course like Jesus said to do they didn't know how to explain what was going to happen ahead of time they just stay committed and allowed it to happen and God began to show up they began to speak in tongues in that upper room. And I, I, there's, there's, there's some timeline on when they got out in the crowd and started speaking tongues among the people as well, which people began to hear them in their language. So that was a, there's an experience in salvation. You receive Christ as your Savior, and some people just stay at that, and you say, well, isn't that enough? Well, it's enough to go to heaven but um, I believe that the Bible puts it in the scripture as not optional equipment, but necessity to become a witness and a powerful witness unto Jesus Christ. And we must understand that just because you are born again does not necessarily mean you have received it all. If there's more to experience, there's a separate experience in the Bible. And I'll get to that maybe by next week. There's a separate experience that tells us that there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a baptism in water, and, um, and even John the Baptist, and we'll get into this more, because there's talk about whether that the Jesus was the... Um, he will come and baptize you with fire. Was that just a cleansing? Was that just, you know, a theological announcement of sanctification? And, and we Pentecostals understand and believe that's the power of the Holy Spirit being foretold into the, uh, these uh, disciples that fully did not understand every detail until the day of Pentecost. Some lights went on. Some things began to make more sense. They couldn't understand everything, but there's a download I I believe it's a special experience when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and then you get to understand that you, it's hard to give that to you you have to receive it to see it it's something you don't see to receive it's something you receive and then you see it it's something you've got to experience it's something inside that words sometimes cannot articulate what you are sensing and no there's just things you know that you know that you know in the baptism of the Holy Spirit that sometimes is hard to explain because so many people try to talk people into receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit I'm going to tell you something if you do what Jesus said and wait in the presence of the Lord with an open heart and an open mind an obedient soul there's an amazing experience when you just posture yourself to receive instead of question to receive instead of analyze to receive instead of be ashamed just receive what the Bible says to receive and then you shall see your eyes will open just like Peter's eyes open and he began to preach to a people he used to be afraid of and now he has authority in his voice and insight in his words and people began to hear the truth under a convicted preacher by the Holy Ghost and it cut their hearts the Bible said and they became saved 3,000 in one day and many of them crucified Christ now willing to die for him hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah somebody and the Bible says Peter did not leave out the order. He didn't leave out the steps that would lead up to his experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First, you got to deal with self. Peter says, I basically, I can't repent for you. I can't change your mind. I can't do this thing for you. This is something you have to be willing to do. 
you have to be willing to repent. None of us can come to the cross of Christ without repentance. And none of us will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit without repentance. Because this is for a cleansed soul. This is for a cleansed mind. Your mind must be made up that whatever God has next, I'm going to embrace it without any hindrance or delay or question or doubt. We can be saved and have some doubts about subjects. We can be saved and have some hesitation about going deeper in Christ. There's a lot of people who are experiencing that right now. You can go further with Christ. And the thing is, if you're not moving in the direction of going further with Christ, I'm telling you, it's more tempting to go backwards than to go forward. You should push for more. You should pray for more. You should anticipate for more. You should believe for more. We should believe God wants to do more with us than just being saved. You say, well, don't talk about it as if being saved is some minor thing. No, it's the major beginning. But there is a there is a lot more behind salvation than just being saved. There's more to this experience. There's, there's some experience. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing some foundation. I ain't even got to my first verse yet. So listen, there's what we believe. Pentecostals believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I'm going to go ahead and clarify right now. We just settle it right now. If you have not spoken in tongues, you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's that charismatic cuckoo stuff that you can just, well, I've got the Spirit. I haven't got my prayer language yet. I just don't believe that. I don't, because in all the areas of Scripture, when you study in the book of Acts, in Acts 2 and Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter... 10 and Acts chapter 19, every one of them spoke with tongues and then prophesied. And then these things begin to happen. Now, I'm not going to, I may get into some of the nuances of that, but let's don't minimize the fact that speaking in tongues, people want to be, you know, they just want to be nominal Christians, but I don't need to speak in tongues. It sounds too fun. You, you got the wrong idea. The Bible doesn't give you that idea that came from the flesh. That doesn't come from the scripture. That doesn't come from God. Prayer language. When you hear, you know what? The Bible says a sign to the unbeliever. Don't worry about what they think. God's going to capture their attention. God's going to have things happen to people through obedient people who want to believe. Listen, I don't care where we are, in public or wherever. If somebody asks me, what I'm, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal. I believe in the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And all the gifts, the prayer language and everything. And if they had some bad experiences with it, so what? Don't, t- don't give them another bad experience by denying what you have. They got to hear a good experience from somebody who's had a good experience. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so we got to realize that the gifts of the Spirit... They don't just happen in church, which they should happen in church and they do periodically... Those are extra. Those are wonderful. I do believe that the gifts of the Spirit would be the Holy Spirit is in charge of that. He's the one who manifests that. And when you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit through baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll be more sensitive to the things that the Holy Spirit wants to do. So go ahead and get your training from being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then God will begin to use you in some of the gifts that are also available to you. And to any one of us. Three Wednesdays ago, I was on this street right here, and a young lady was on this street. After we had the trees trimmed, she was at the trees poking at some of the wood, and I went up and I talked to her. 
And the Lord told me to talk to her. I don't usually like to talk to every single person when it comes to the street situation because I've been through so much in the, this little street right here for the past 30 years with all the riffraff that goes up and down the street. I, don't, I got too many stories from being a cat killer, Satan worshiper to street people, drugs and needles on the property and all kinds of stuff. But the Lord told me, to, I, I went down and I, I, I spoke to her. And I knew the Lord wanted me to share an encouraging word to her. I just didn't know how I was going to do it until it began. And then I began to talk to her. And as I, the Lord was giving me some downloads, word of knowledge. Anybody know what a word of knowledge is? It's not guesswork. It's God's work. And I told her about the Lord and encouraging her. This is not where you're supposed to be. You weren't designed for this. And God was just flowing through me to give her an encouraging, loving, caring word. And in the middle of it, I would throw this word of knowledge. I said, you're 31 years old. She goes, yeah, how'd you know that? I said, the Lord wants you to hear me. And I began to uh, talk to her again. I said, I said, you have a baby. And um, she goes, yes, I says, and it's um, a boy or a girl. And I said, boy, and, and I said, he's five, he's, he's five or six years old. And she's, she said, that's correct. And then I'll download some more encouragement. You see, the gifts are not to make you look like you're some kind of psyche or psychic the gifts are to get the attention of people so that you can have a little more time sharing with them the real message of Christ and the message of, uh, that the Holy Spirit is trying to give to them because it means something. When they know that it's just not a human talk to them, but God is talking to them. And the downloads come like that. I was sitting on the airplane. My wife and I, my wife will remember this. And you got a captive audience on an airplane. <laughs> and I was in my mind already thinking, if I'm going to sit for so many hours next to somebody I don't know, I wonder what I can do to stimulate a conversation where I can interject the gospel somewhere along the way. I'm not going to. You know, I'm not going to make them uncomfortable. I want to be led by the Spirit as well. And then that happened again. I wanted to talk to this lady. And then if you remember, I was talking to this lady. And, and finally I said, you're an accountant. How did you know that? And so then I was just saying things like that. Um, I, and, and, and began to talk to her about the Lord. They got, I got, the Lord got their attention. Then I was able to feed the gospel. I was on a cruise and we did the same thing on several occasions. I told this person how long, this couple, how long they've been married precisely. I told them that they're in a situation with their marriage. As a matter of fact, I saw the picture of a lady that I would, and <clears throat> we were going through our pictures, and you 3,000 people on the boat were going through their picture. And I saw that picture, and it was just laying there, it's just a discarded pictures and I picked that up and the Lord spoke to me I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to see this lady and I'm going to witness to her lo and behold during tea time Sandra and I walked in and there she was by herself I had 3,000 people there she was I saw in the picture and I began to tell her about what the Lord told me to put tell her you see I'm going to tell you that the baptism of the Holy Spirit frees you up that you can be sensitive to be used of God in ways that you were afraid to do before. A lot of people are afraid to, to talk about these things with people because they may be guessing. But if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you these downloads. It happens with me. That's the way it happens with me periodically. I walk up to people in Walmart and say, I need to pray for your daughter. How did you know she wants to commit suicide? There are things that take place.
But if you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit where the evidence is speaking in tongues and truly knowing the Word of God and know the gifts of God, not kooky stuff, not flaky stuff, being in a Pentecostal church where they believe the power of God and believe the wisdom of God and that everything that happens is not something that's outside the Bible, but the Bible actually supports. I can give you more stories. I can do these things and encourage you. Not that I want you to go around and tell everybody's business, because most of the time I just preach the gospel without the gifts. Why? Because it's enough for me that God can know, knows what to do with the gospel when I preach it. And remember, it's not about me, but if the occasion rises, the Holy Spirit baptism gives you power. To become a witness of God. And that means they see the power in you. That How did you know that? Like the, the young lady on the street. How did you know that? I didn't answer that. I just said, well, I did answer it. I said, because God wants to talk to you. I put it back on because God wants to talk to you. And it ends up being disarming. It brings their walls down. Because they really feel like, well, maybe I need to listen. The Holy Spirit, people with the Holy Spirit baptism, I believe, I believe I can say this with confidence, have a greater chance of attracting the soul of someone that's in need. Not that the gospel won't from just an any normal person, but I think spirit-filled people go a step further. I think God allows them to go behind another door. I believe God wants us all to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. With the, can you imagine if we all just get filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues in the house? That this community right here with this many people is already in trouble. We're going to be reading their mail and giving them the download from God. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've had it with UPS dri uh, drivers. Off, right, I've, stuff, I've had people walk up to my house delivering stuff and God will give me a download to give them. Say, it happened, can happen anywhere. We did it with a, 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 a lady at the uh, uh, Sambo's back in the day. Anybody remember Sambo's? In South Florida. Praying for. We witnessed to this young lady. And as a waitress, a youth group, our youth group was out together, or I should say young adult. And <clears throat> we went to Sambo's in Deerfield Beach, used to be there. And we made it a point to, we're going to witness this lady. Well, finally, this, this girl asked us a question and says, do you believe, of course, we were, sowing seed into her but then finally she asked us a question can you pray for my grandmother she's going into surgery tomorrow she has a softball sized tumor they've already done the x-rays and everything and they've already made the plan on how they're going to surgically remove it and she says my grandmother is old older I'm concerned actually how that happened she called me on the phone that's what happened. I gave her my number. She called me on the phone because she could not get through to 700 Club. She goes, I tried to call 700 Club and it was busy, 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 busy. So my first thought was I was second choice. Have you ever felt that way? I was her second choice. So she called me up. I prayed for her, nothing extravagant. I just prayed. I said, we believe Pentecostals. We believe in the power of God. And I'm going to pray, not, not for your sympathy, not because I'm sympathizing with you. I'm going to pray that God will heal her and give her a miracle, a miracle and show you who God is. Simple. The day after, she calls up and says, I just want to let you know there was no surgery. And I thought for a second, okay, where did this go? She goes, the reason there's no surgery is because they did a, a I don't know, a pre-op thing, what they're going to do. And they, she said that they could not find the tumor. It was totally disappeared. Well, that wasn't enough for me. 
And you know that over the years, I've said bring in proof. Bring in proof. Not that I, I want, I would just put the, the skepticism of other people in the church at rest. When we had a lady healed of brain cancer, I said, bring in the proof. We showed it. Here's the thing. I said, can you come to church? I don't even think she was a Christian. She just worried about her grandmother. And she says, yes, I can, and I'll bring my grandmother and let her tell you. She came to church that next Sunday, brought her grandmother in, grinning, and the sweet lady came up and just, thank you. I heard that you prayed over the phone, my granddaughter, thank you. I didn't have to be cut on, and it was a miracle from God, and I know it. Thank you so much. I said all that because this is what Pentecostals do. Now, if you're a good Baptist, and I said good Baptist, I've got family members who are Baptists. I've got good friends who are Baptists. I mean, they believe in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Bible. We believe in Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I want to be a church that God, if he said, I paid it, I gave it. I don't want to be a church that did not use all the resources of the Holy Spirit. We still must believe. I've got other stories that's happened here. Some of you know stories that we've had here happen in this altar. I wanted to encourage you this week to be Pentecostal. Not in name, but in experience. Let's receive. And I, I, got, a whole, I got a whole study on what I needed to talk about. I want you to understand that God wants to use every one of us. He's more eager and more willing. God doesn't have flesh to deal with. We do. So the Bible, that's why the Bible says the spirit is willing. Because what God is spirit. The spirit is willing. But the flesh, he wants to hang you up. It wants to cause you to double check, rethink, doubt, step back, maybe not. Don't know if it's going to work. Should I or shouldn't I? Y'all know what that flesh does. I've been there. I still get there once in a while. I've, I've run into millionaires and gave them a word. Thinking if it's wrong, <clears throat> if I ever had a chance to get a tithe from them, it ain't going to happen. I'm just kidding. But in the back of your mind, you want to be seen as on target. But how many know if you, if you go to the back of your mind, it's different than going to the Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus over this church right now that you're going to get divine appointments this week. And I want you to act out your faith today. Because, listen, the reason, the reason you are bored with Christianity is I believe, number one, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And number two, if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you've been reluctant, you've not been following the wooing and the leading of the Holy Spirit, no wonder you're getting bored. It's more exciting to get out and touch people by the Holy Spirit. Now, I know, I was just talking to Goldie, we can all get public weary in our jobs. How many know you nurses and, and workers in hospitals and public and things happening? You, and, and <clears throat> you can get public weary, but if you can remember to kick in the power of the Holy Spirit and not your flesh, then you get, re listen, listen, you get renewed. And I'm going to talk about that next week, hopefully. I'm making an outline for you. 
You get renewed every time you are used by the Holy Spirit. If you, listen, sometimes we come in church and, and we want to be renewed by the song. We want to be renewed by the words of the preacher. We want to be renewed by the teacher. We want to be renewed by the gathering. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's not a renewal comparing. Uh, there's not a renewal comparable to action by faith. It is the most satisfying, fulfilling, renewing, revival you'll ever experience is that when you become more than just a nominal Christian, that you actually use the Holy Spirit to bless people instead of competing with them. If all we're doing is trying to compete with people or to combat them, or to get something from them that you want that has nothing to do with spirituality. You're going to drain yourself. And God says, I want you filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled. You know, <clears throat> the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible says. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now that word filled is not a one-time experience. The word filled is a continuum. It is something you do continually. How many know, you've heard me say this for years, why do we need to be filled and refilled? Because we're going to talk about seasons of renewal next week. We're going to, <clears throat> why do we need to have these refills and refillings? Because we leak Our vessels get cracked once in a while, get poked at. We get knocked over. But be filled means a, every day, every moment, Lord, fill me. Lord, fill me. It's a continuum. It's not a one-time experience. It's not something you did 40 years ago, five years ago. It's something you allow God to continue to do because the Holy Spirit is pictured like a river of living waters should be flowing out of you. Rivers of living water should be flow, flowing out. Isn't what the Bible tells us? Flowing out of you. Flowing. Flowing. And we let sickness sometimes. And, and those are challenges. I know big ones. And we let letdowns and, and sorrow and hurt feelings and, and, and unmet expectations and, and, and sudden tragedy and, and sudden surprises stop the flow. Because we start then to react to protect our flesh rather than to react to allow the flow. Wouldn't you love to have a better answer than we do in the flesh when things hit us all of a sudden? So I know sometimes I have to, I wish I'd have said that when I was in that situation. I, would have, I wish I'd have said this. And you look back on a situation, you walked away from it and said, man, I wish I'd have said this. or I wish I'd have said that. You know how you can get over those kind of regrets? Be filled presently with the Holy Spirit. And then out of your whatever you're full of when you get bumped, that's what comes out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Was this okay for Pentecost Sunday today? I'm going to ask you to stand with me.